In this video I want to show you how I'm going to take this uh, replacement cigarette lighter for my 51 GMC truck and turn it into a kill switch uh, for the ignition. Uh, I bought this uh, online from uh, Classic Parts. It's a GMC uh, Chevy truck or a truck and car site. Uh, I kind of like them, although you can get them in uh, the uh, cigarette lighters in any number of places uh, that supply classic cars and trucks. Uh, this one is a cigarette lighter assembly for a 47 to 53 Chevy or a GMC truck. Uh, looks like it was manufactured by Counterpart Automotive. Anyway, it cost about $22, so not too bad. Uh, it's the classic lighter. You know, you push it in, it heats up, it pops out when it gets hot. Uh, it has a several parts to it. This part screws off now. It screws on to mount it into the dash. This goes through the hole in the dash. Uh, my truck did not come with a uh, lighter. However, it has a knockout plug that this will go into. All right, just take the plug out and throw this in the hole. This screws on to mount it to the dash. The little teeth grab a hold of the metal on the back of the dash and actually form a ground uh, for the power that comes is normally mounted to uh, from the battery to this post here. Uh, ignore this thing here. I was trying to do something. Uh, yours will look <laughs> just like this. Anyway, uh, these work classically. Uh, you push this in, the power through this post heats up this element here, which heats up a coil, uh, which is right here, and I've, I've pulled it out already. I should have waited to do that, but it's just a uh, resistor wire. You pull it out of there, and then it, you light your cigarette with it, for those of you who haven't seen one before. Uh, anyway, what we're going to do is turn this into a push button, so we don't need the uh, heating element in there. Uh, so we're going to pop that out of there. These, ma these uh, match the originals pretty well. Uh, your dash knobs all have this little brown dot, and some of them have this brown side on them. It may look black in the, the video, but it's actually kind of a dark brown. Matches up quite well, actually. I uh, took it out and matched it to the knobs in my uh, truck. So what we want to do set those aside is uh, take this out there's a it's very simple there's a nut down in there and uh, it happens to be I measured it earlier a uh, 330 seconds so take that socket and we'll just spin that out of there Almost. Almost. There we are. All right. So, of those parts, we will need this again. Uh, we do not need the little grabby thing that grabs a hold of this. It's the heating element, uh, and it also grabs a hold of the, the back. This is what it was grabbing. It was grabbing that part of that. Uh, and then that would heat up and once it got hot enough apparently it would expand and let this go so don't need that either what we will be doing is putting it all back together well we will be mounting uh, cutting this hole open uh, the round part uh, I'm going to get a uh, push button on off push button that'll uh, drop in through there uh, so the button part will be inside and I'll cut a hole big enough for it here and here we'll put that together put the mounting button inside put this in there and then this effectively will become just a little pushy thing that'll push on the on the button uh, we'll have to adjust uh, that to where it works exactly right anyway it's as simple as that and as soon as I get the button, we'll finish this video. In order to uh, 
drill the holes in the uh, two pieces that we need a nice half inch hole in. I've set up a jig on my drill press uh, with some dowel rods, bigger dowel rod through the hole of the base. Uh, this is wrapped a little so that it'll fit the uh, silver part and then a little copper part will fit on there. So we can put those in there and then set up our bit and we're good to go. Alright, we've got it all set up. I didn't show it because it's kind of hard to set, <laughs> set up. Uh, it's an old drill press and kind of heavy. Uh, I've clamped the sides here. Just clamp that together to keep the uh, this part from spinning around. Yeah, let's see if we can get a hole in there. see the little copper part is not clamped and started to spin around so whoop, that was hot uh, so I will try and uh, fix that all right I drilled a little hole in the copper sleeve there and uh, put a brad in it just push that in there that should keep it from spinning let's go at it again we got the top metal piece the stainless. Now we're just trying to get a little get at uh, the copper part. So I think we uh, we did it. I'll take it apart and we'll take a look. Okay, got our holes drilled in both of our pieces. And we received our switches. Uh, these are the ones that I ended up getting. They're from a company, uh, not sure the name of the company, maybe Dyer Tech. Uh, let's get that to focus on there. Why I want to do it. Why won't it do it? There we go. Die or tech. <laughs> anyway, that's that's the sticker that came on it. Uh, you get six of them. They are light up. They have an LED light on the button. We won't be using that. Uh, that's the reason there's four wires on each one. Uh, we do want the spare parts off of one of them, though. So it's nice they come in a little package. They were under 20 bucks, if I can recall. Uh, Here's the two parts of one. Here's the little push button part. So I'm gonna get some light on that. There you go. There you go. Kind of see it. And then of course the uh, tail that you uh, connector. We won't be. We'll be using the two greens, which apparently the power and uh, not using the other two, which we'll probably just clip off. So, I took an extra nut from one of the spare ones, so that I'll have two nuts to sandwich uh, our parts together with. We want to drop that in there. Now our hole is a half inch, which is a little over 12 millimeters, and the shaft of these switches is 12 millimeters, so it, it works out right. I, I had to shop around to find some that would fit inside here. Uh, and we need it all contained inside uh, because this sleeve has to come over it. Uh, we can't have ones that have a big, you know, uh, block on the back end with things to connect to. So, put that in there. 
put him back on. Now let's see how tricky it is. Get this nut down in there and spinning properly. I think I'll use an ice pick to see if I can get it started. Looks like it started. I pull up on the copper while I'm turning it. It should grab the nut and twist it in. It does. All right. I'll put some uh, locking uh, thread lock on those so it doesn't come loose. So we have our switch down in there. Yeah, lights reflecting back. Can't really see it. Come on. Focus, focus, focus. All right, up there we go. Follow it back up. Yeah, it's difficult to see. Kind of see it down in there. Anyway, I took this part of it, and I told you earlier I pulled the uh, resistor wire out of it. It was it was mounted down inside there. I had pulled that out and gotten rid of it. I'm gonna take a washer, a, uh, a faucet washer, and there's a little nub there, so the little hole in the faucet wash washer helps, and it fits right in there, just like that. And that'll be uh, part of my pushy part. Give me a little more, it's a rubber, and I'll glue that in there so it doesn't fall out. <clears throat> and so, put that in there, and push on it and it just so happens that between the uh, button the depth of the button and putting that washer on there that it works if it didn't I'd have to adjust up or down or add more to the washer end of things or whatever that's basically it uh, this will snap on Somehow here, there we go. Snap that on so it's on. Uh, get rid of two of the wires and use the other two as an interrupter for the coil wire, is the way I'm going to use it. Anyway, that's the end product. Thanks for watching.